Bismillah, wassalatu wassalam ala malla nabiya ba'da. All praises is indeed due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the nourisher, the sustainer, the capacitated master of creation. Lovely viewers, I welcome you once again to my YouTube channel, Soldiers of Islam Media, with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As usual, we are continuing with our series of reminders. Now today, our topic of discussion is amazing. Now it's entitled, Observing the Sunnah and the Manners of Its Obedience. Observing the Sunnah and the Manners of Its Obedience. Observing the Sunnah and the Manners of Its Obedience. Now, I'll begin by quoting some verses from the Quran. Allah said in Surah Al-Hashr, Ayah number 7, Allah says, وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُزُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ أَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيدُ الْإِقَابِ And whatsoever the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives you, take it, and whatsoever he forbids you, abstain from it. Allah said further in Surah Al-Imran, Ayah number 31, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَكْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Say, O Muhammad, to mankind, if you really love Allah, then follow me. Islamic, that is, accept Islamic monotheism. Follow the Quran and the Sunnah and will love you and forgive you of your sins. In Surah Al-Ahzab, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Translated meaning, Indeed, in the Messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you have a good example to follow. For him who hopes for the meeting with Allah and the last day, Allah said again in Surah Al-Shura, Ayah number 52. وَإِنَّكَ لَتَحْدِي إِلَىٰ سُرَاتٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ And verily, you, O Muhammad, are indeed guiding mankind to the straight path. Deen of Allah, that is Islamic monotheism. Now, let's look at some wonderful hadiths. In the, uh, regarding this topic, Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, reported that the Prophet وسلم, said, Do not ask me unnecessary about the details of the things which I do not mention to you. Verily, the people before you were doomed because they were used to putting many questions to their prophets and had differences about their prophets. Refrain from what I forbid you and do what I command you to the best of your ability and capacity. Al-Bukhari and Muslim narrated the hadith. Now let's take some, some lessons from this uh, hadith. To be unnecessarily inquisitive and create differences and confusion and the injunction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam leads to distraction. Yes, that's true. The safest course lies only in following the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam without if or but. Hair splitting in religious issues fall in this category. It opens the door for chaos and conflict and paves the way for disunity and separation. Furthermore, concerning this same hadith, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give sense to the Muslim Ummah to abandon this road and take the right path 
which ensures peace and security let let it be absolutely clear that the right path is one and one alone there cannot be multiple right paths it is one and singular once a community leaves the straight path it is sure to go astray it bad ibn sariya radiallahu anhu reported that one day the messenger of allah delivered us a very eloquent hutbah on account of which eyes shed tears and hearts were full of tears a man said o prophet of allah this is as if it were a pattern advice they thought that is the last sermon or that is the final sermon the prophet wanted to, to depart from this world so advise us he said admonish you he said i admonish you to fear allah to listen and obey even if an abyssinia slave is appointed as your leader because whosoever amongst you shall live after me will see much discord so hold fast to my sunnah and the examples of the righteous guided caliph that's the righteous guided sahabit who will come after me adhere to serve and hold to its fast beware of new things in the din because every bid'a innovation is a misguidance abu dawud and tirmizi narrated the hadith now let's take some lessons from this hadith also this hadith stresses piety obedience to the leader following in the footstep of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the first four noble caliphs strictly forbids innovation in the deen another lesson is also this hadith also reveals the predictions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that the muslim ummah will become a victim of dissensions he also prescribed the right means of he also prescribed the right means to counteract it the remedy that he has proposed for this problem is that muslims should never deviate from the path laid for them by him and his righteous successes this is the touchstone for discovering the truth from the mess of different views all the troubles of muslim will come to an end if they accept this as the one singular criterion of right and wrong abu huraira again narrated reported from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said every one of my ummah will enter jannah except those who refuse hmm, this is very curious he was asked who will refuse obviously who will refuse not to enter jannah so he said whoever obeys me shall enter jannah and whosoever disobeys me refuses to enter jannah al bukhari narrated the hadith now let's look at the lessons or lesson we can pick from this hadith the word umma here stands for the community which accepts the invitation of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that is to say the people who on his course embrace islam out of this community those who follow him faithfully will go to jannah another hadith which is very amazing also ibn abbas radiyallahu anhu may allah be pleased with him reported that the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said on the day of resurrection you will be assembled barefooted naked and circumcised he then recited as we began the first creation we shall repeat it it is a promise binding upon us truly we shall do it and continued the first to be clothed on the day of resurrection will be prophet abraham that is ibrahim then some of my companions will be taken to the left towards hellfire may allah forbid us and when i will say 
they belong to my ummah oh my rab oh allah it will be said you do not know what they invented after you had left them i shall then say as the righteous slave isa jesus said and i was a witness over them whilst i was amongst them when you took me upon or when you took me up you were the watcher over them and you were or you are a witness of all things if you punish them they are your slaves and if you forgive them verily you only you are the almighty the all wise i shall be told they continue to turn on their heels since you parted from them bukhari and muslim narrated the hadith now let's take some lessons from this hadith we learned from this hadith that the punishment of apostasy in is hell for this reason this crime is punishable by death in islam we also we also learned from this hadith that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had neither knowledge of the unseen nor is the omnipresent and omni omniscient that is omniscient as is falsely believed by deviated people if he had the knowledge of the unseen or had he been omnipresent and omniscient he would not have accepted such persons as his companions and followers who were in the fact of what apost apostate this is the reason when he was informed of their real conduct through wahi revelation he disowned them in the same way as prophet isa jesus had disowned the people who had started worshiping him and his mother as god now we have learned many things from this wonderful topic that is adhering to the sunnah at all observing the sunnah and the manners of its obedience now we should always try as much as possible to stick to what we have got not to innovate innovating or innovation is a distraction is distraction innovation is distraction we should all abstain from what we do not have a complete idea or we still have doubts about it islam is a complete religion and we don't have we need any top up it's complete and we don't need any top up we should stick always try to ask the scholars always try to consult the scholars who knew about the religion who can best teach you the practices that is well accepted by almighty god so this wonderful reminder i guess it will touch your heart please share the video if you are interested and if you are happy with this kind of video please share the video to your loved ones and your family so that they can also benefit please subscribe to the youtube channel and hit on the notification bell so that anytime i drop a new video inshallah you will not be left out much love assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh <laughs>